really? Then you got a right to chicken done right. I make it tender, juicy, and every bite. I make fresh hot biscuits and tasty fresh coleslaw. You got a right to chicken, chicken done right. Nobody makes chicken like we do with the Colonel's secret blend of herbs and spices. It's finger looking good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. In 1983, on September the 23rd, the town of Kilgore, Texas, which had a population of around 10,000, experienced a tragic event that would leave a permanent mark on the community. The ruthless carnage at a local Kentucky Fried Chicken resulted in the deaths of five individuals and set off an investigation that would continue for decades. Delving into the details of that fateful night, the ensuing investigation, and the unanswered questions that still haunt Kilgore, this video provides a comprehensive look at the events. The Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant in Kilgore was lively that evening, with a local football game bringing in a surge of hungry customers looking for a quick bite to eat. That night, the Kentucky Fried Chicken crew included Mary Tyler, a 37-year-old manager with extensive experience, and her daughter, Kimberly Miller, a 17-year-old newcomer to the team. Among those present were Opie Hughes, 39 years old, Joey Johnson, a 20-year-old, and David Maxwell, also 20 years old, who had stopped by to give back a motorbike he had borrowed from his friend Joey. At 9.10 p.m., Kimberly finished her shift and left the restaurant. However, she soon realized she needed some money, prompting her to return to Kentucky Fried Chicken around 10.30 p.m. To her amazement, the lights were off and the door was unlocked. Upon entering, she was startled to find blood on the floor and immediately called her stepfather, Bill Tyler, for assistance. As they entered Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bill and Kimberly were met with a scene of chaos in the kitchen, pans and fryers in disarray on the floor. The presence of two Kentucky Fried Chicken hats left behind suggested a possible struggle had taken place. Understanding the severity of the situation, they quickly reached out to the police for assistance. As soon as the officers arrived, they discovered that the cash register had been emptied, suggesting a robbery. Oddly, there was no sign of the employees or David Maxwell. Initially, there was a theory that an accident occurred in the kitchen, but it was soon dismissed because none of the missing individuals had returned home or reached out to anyone. At midnight, Opie Hughes and Joey Johnson's families were notified about their disappearances, prompting an increased effort in the search for the missing five. As dawn broke, an oil rig employee came across a harrowing sight in an oil field in Rusk County, not far from Kilgore. The individuals found were later recognized as Mary Tyler, Opie Hughes, Joey Johnson, David Maxwell, and Monty Landers. Each one had been brutally shot in the head, bearing the grim signature of an execution-style killing. Mary Tyler and the three boys were uncovered, lying face down with their arms crossed under their heads, while Opie Hughes was found 30 yards away, indicating she may have tried to make a getaway. 
There were also suspicions of an assault, but it was impossible to confirm during the 1980s due to the limitations of forensic technology at the time. The probe was impeded by multiple challenges, including the lack of physical evidence and the contamination of the crime scene. Kilgore authorities, lacking the resources and experience to handle such a major case, enlisted the help of the Texas Rangers. Despite their involvement, the investigation remained a daunting task due to the absence of concrete leads. Initially, the focus shifted to James L. Makins Jr. when a broken fingernail was found in Joey Johnson's jeans, a key piece of evidence linking him to the crime. Makins is the son of a Texas representative known for his connections to drug trafficking. After being apprehended for minor infractions prior to the murders, Makins came under suspicion for borrowing a gun on the night in question. Despite this, DNA testing later eliminated him as a suspect when the evidence failed to match his genetic profile. Following a decade of little progress, there was a significant leap forward in forensic technology that provided a major breakthrough. Upon retesting, the bloodstains at the crime scene were found to match those of Romeo Pinkerton and Darnell Hartsfield, both with a violent criminal past. Despite being released earlier, the new evidence put them back back under scrutiny. Pinkerton and Hartsfield's DNA was found at the crime scene, leading to their arrests and trials. In 2005, Darnell Hartsfield was convicted of aggravated perjury for lying about his whereabouts on the night of the murders and was given a life sentence. In 2008, Hartsfield was found guilty of the murders and received additional life sentences. Romeo Pinkerton also pleaded guilty to avoid the death penalty and was sentenced to five consecutive life sentences. The year was 2005 when Hartsfield was brought to trial for aggravated perjury. Despite his defense team's best attempts to discredit the evidence, the jury ultimately found him guilty. This marked the beginning of a long legal saga for Hartsfield. Fast forward to 2008, and he was once again in court, this time facing murder charges. His defense team tried to cast doubt on the blood evidence and even suggested other potential suspects like Kimberly Miller. However, the jury was not swayed and handed down five life terms. Pinkerton, who was first let out on bail for a different offense, was eventually apprehended and tried for his part in the tragic Kentucky Fried Chicken Massacre. Confronted with overwhelming evidence and the possibility of facing capital punishment, Pinkerton opted to plead guilty to the murders. Subsequently, he was sentenced to five consecutive life terms guaranteeing that he would spend the remainder of his days in prison. Despite Pinkerton and Hartfield's convictions, there are lingering questions about a third suspect's involvement. The semen found on Opie Hughes' trousers did not match either man, indicating the presence of another possible perpetrator. This unidentified third suspect's DNA does not correspond to any profiles in the database. 
The Kentucky Fried Chicken tragedy is a painful reminder of one of Kilgore's most tragic moments. The families of the victims are still seeking closure, and the community is left with the haunting memory of the night when five lives were brutally taken. This case underscores the critical need for advancements in forensic technology and the immediate processing of crime scenes. With time, we maintain hope that new evidence or developments and DNA technology will eventually provide closure and justice for the victims and their families. In the meantime, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Massacre stands as a sobering reminder of the fragility of life and the enduring pursuit of justice.